Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be reading Stories of Princes and Princesses written by Christopher Rawson and illustrated by Stephen Cartwright. Before I start, I would like to say a big thank you to all my subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, could you please subscribe? Thank you. Chapter 1. The Clumsy Prince Colin was the clumsiest prince in the kingdom. Other princes fought dragons. Colin fell over them. Other princes battered villains. Colin bumped into them. One day, he tripped in front of a sad princess. She thought he was so funny, she wanted to marry him on the spot. Are you princely enough to marry my daughter? Her father had other ideas. He gave Colin three tests. Tests he knew Colin would not pass. First, Colin had to show how polite he could be. But he was so busy talking politely to the Queen. Careful, Daddy! My I pass you the sugar, Mum. That he didn't see the butler. Next, he had to take the princess out, but somehow he lost the royal boat. Then, he had to ride the royal horse like a prince. He rides like a clown, said the king. He must leave the palace tomorrow. That night, Colin couldn't sleep. Suddenly, he heard a scream. It was the princess. Help! I'm being kidnapped! Colin jumped. What was going on? Was someone stealing the princess? He leaned out of his window and sent a flower pot flying. Ow! Straight onto the head of the man stealing the princess. The princess thief fell to the ground with a thud. Colin raced from the tower and swept up the princess. Got you! The king and queen raced out too. What's going on? cried the king. What has clumsy Colin done now? He rescued me, said the princess. Really? said the king. Really? she said. The king smiled. Well, the reward for rescuing a princess is to marry her, he said. Oh, Colin! So Colin lived clumsily but happily ever after. Chapter 2 The Princess 
who wouldn't get married. Prue liked being a princess, except for one thing. She didn't want to marry a prince. You have to, said her dad. It's what princesses do. The king asked three princes to visit. Choose one, he told Prue. But Prue didn't want to. Princes are boring, she said. Too plump, too tall. Prue disliked the third prince, but she didn't say so. Too hairy. The king was angry. If you want to marry a prince, you'll marry the first man who comes to the castle. The very next day, a beggar arrived playing an old violin. I order you to marry my daughter. Yes, sir, your majesty. Prue and the beggar were married on the spot. With his beard, the beggar reminded Prue of someone. Whoever he was, she didn't want to marry him. But the beggar took Prue home as his wife. Welcome to your new home. Cheer up, he said. If you married a prince, you'd have to live in a boring castle. The beggar was kind, but very poor. They wore old rags and never had enough to eat. Prue was used to servants. Now she did everything. The floors at the palace seemed to stay clean. One day, the beggar brought home some straw. We can make baskets to sell, he said. But the straw cut Prue's hands. This is no good. You must get a job, said the beggar. Prince Alec is getting married. Perhaps you can work in the castle over the hill. The castle cook was pleased to have help. She took pity on Prue and gave her some food. Prue was going home when she passed the ballroom. She sighed. There was Prince Alec giving a speech to his guests. Perhaps it wouldn't have been so bad to marry a prince. Just then, the prince turned around and saw her. You're the hairy prince, cried Prue. I wonder if she knows. Prue tried to run away and the food fell from her apron. 
The guests began to laugh. I'd like to dance with you, said the prince, and he reached for her hand. Just one dance. Prue burst into tears. She pulled her hand from the prince and fled. But Prince Alec caught up with her. Prue looked at him closely. It was her beggar. Don't you recognise my violin? He took her back to the ballroom. Would you marry a prince now? asked Alec. I would, said Prue, but I'm already married to you. No more flowers to scrub, ever! Chapter 3 The Princess and the Pig Boy once a poor prince named Sam lived in a tiny castle. All he owned were a beautiful rose tree and a lovely nightingale. Sam fell in love with a rich princess named Sarah. So he sent her, his beautiful tree, and the lovely nightingale. But Sarah was not pleased. A silly tree and a noisy bird, she said. Film them back. Sam didn't give up. He went to Sarah's palace and got a job taking care of the palace pigs. They don't smell as sweet as my rose tree. But Sam missed his home. He especially missed the lovely songs of his nightingale. So he made a rattle which played magical tunes. It put the pigs to sleep. Sarah was out with her maids when she heard the rattle. I want it, she said. It costs 100 kisses, said Sam. Kiss the pig boy, yuck. Never, said Sarah. But she did want the rattle. I'll give you ten kisses, she said. The price is one hundred, said Sam. Sarah had to give in. The king was on his balcony when he heard giggling. It was coming from the pigsty. What's going on down there? The king hurried down. He crept up behind Sarah's maids and looked over their shoulders. Hmm, someone's kissing the pig boy. It's Sarah!
The king was very angry. Princesses don't kiss pig boys, he shouted. Both of you must leave at once. Go and never come back. Sam and Sarah had to leave the palace. I don't even like pigs, said Sarah. I wish I'd married that poor prince. Sam quickly changed his clothes behind a tree. You can, he cried. The happy prince. The poor prince. Sam took Sarah to live in his tiny castle. Sometimes she even watered the rose tree. Chapter 4 The Smelly Prince Percy was the rudest, dirtiest, smelliest prince in the country. He lived all alone in his dirty old castle. He didn't like children. He hated animals. He had no friends. Not one. Ah! Slimy cabbage! Run! Even his soldiers called him Smelly Purse. Though not to his face. He was a very lonely prince. Until one day, he had an idea. He would capture a princess and marry her. She'll do. Get her. Yes, sir, but I don't think she'll be happy about it. Percy grabbed the first princess to come along. He was taking her home when they passed some moles. There were mole hills all over his field. Percy was very angry. I won't have any moles near my castle. Smash their homes! Percy locked the princess in a tower. But she had already agreed to marry someone else. A clean prince named Harry. I shall rescue her at once, Harry said. But he couldn't get into Percy's castle. Just then, a mole popped its head above ground. Percy smashed our homes. It said, we'll help you. Don't worry, your highness. We'll soon get you into the castle. The moles dug all night. They dug all of the next day, too. By the following evening, they'd built a tunnel. It ran all the way under the moat and into the castle. Prince Harry was delighted. The tunnel took him into Percy's dungeons. Who are you? Prince Harry. Harry set the prisoners free. 
Then he went to find Percy and the princess. Percy tried to stop Harry, but his sword was so rusty it bent. He was no match for Harry. As if that was a bad enough, Harry's soldiers decided Percy needed a bath. Don't get soap in my eyes! To Percy's surprise, he found being clean was fun and people were friendlier. Harry rescued the princess and married her. Even Percy was invited to their wedding. The invitation said, Please come, but take a bath first. I hope you enjoyed listening to my book. Thank you, take care and goodbye.